All right, I want to talk about uh, how to promote good tax policy. And I'm going to make the argument that uh, politicians have no interest in good tax policy because that doesn't gain them more votes. It's always in, the, in their interest to demonize the top 5%, the top 10%, the top 1%. Uh, so, so how do we somehow overcome that institutional bias in the political class for more taxes? And I would argue that it's if governments have to compete with each other. We know competition works in the private sector. Gas stations would rip us off if we had no choices. Uh, grocery stores would rip us off. Banks would rip us off. Competition is the consumer's best friend uh, because if businesses know that people can shop someplace else, all of a sudden they have to cater to us instead of the other way around. And the simple premise of tax competition is that the same lesson should apply to governments. And the good news is in the modern era, that has been happening. Uh, here's a chart from the Commerce Department in the United States. It shows cross-border mobility of capital uh, just into the United States from overseas. And you can see, starting in the 1970s, there's been an explosion in inbound investment. And this is just a proxy. There's been a giant increase in cross-border mobility all around the world. And what does this mean? It means that taxpayers can move their money out of the grasp of greedy politicians, at least they traditionally did. And during this era of capital mobility and tax competition, we saw big reductions in tax rates. It used to be that the top income tax rate in developed countries was between 67 and 68 percent. It dropped down close to 40 percent. It used to be the average corporate tax rate was 48 percent. Now it's down to actually less than 24 percent. We've also seen death taxes and wealth taxes eliminated. We've seen reductions in the double taxation of saving and investment, and we've even seen uh, a number of flat tax jurisdictions. Now, have all these changes occurred because people were reading my policy papers? Were, were they reading the Tax Foundation or, or, or other think tanks? No. I mean, I hope they were doing those things, but I think these changes occurred mostly because politicians were afraid. They were afraid that the money was escaping, the tax base was escaping. That's the whole premise of tax competition force politicians to do the right thing even though they don't want to. And why are they doing the right thing? One reason. They're afraid that the geese with the golden eggs are flying away. And if you're a politician, that's the worst possible thing in the world. Now think about what this means for the principles of good tax policy. What type of tax rates do we want? Well, as Michael already mentioned, we want low tax rates. If, it, if you have a zero or a 20 percent marginal tax rate, you're probably going to be productive. But if you have a 50 or 100 percent tax rate, of course you're not going to work and be productive. Well, here's the genius and the benefit of tax competition. Politicians want to be at the bottom of that slide. But with tax competition, they're forced to be at the top of the slide. Uh, they, they can't be greedy because they know that if the taxpayer moves or the taxpayer's money moves, then it doesn't matter if they have a 70% or 80% rate. 70 or 80% is zero is zero. And that's what's great about tax competition. And of course, this is very good from a supply side microeconomic uh, principle of good tax policy. Politicians understand that high taxes discourage smoking. We want to force them to realize that high taxes discourage working and saving and investing. Speaking of saving and investing, uh, this flowchart, you won't be able to read it probably, but on the left side it shows what happens if you consume your after-tax income, and the right side shows what happens if you save and invest your after-tax income. You get taxed over and over again because politicians say, oh, rich people have saving and investing. So let's impose uh, corporate taxation, double taxation of dividends, capital gains taxes, death taxes, wealth taxes. So let's think about the same principle. Politicians want to be on the right side if they don't have any constraints, if they think taxpayers are captive. But in a world of tax competition, they're forced to be on the left side of the flow chart. And again, let's think about what this means from the principle of good tax policy. You, you can't show this flow chart to a politician. It's too complicated. But I, sometimes I give, them, I, I give them the simple example. Imagine if they ran an apple orchard. 
That's kind of simple, a tree, apples. Even a politician can grasp the underlying economics of how an apple orchard works. And I tell them, after you make the big investment and take the risks and everything, and you somehow get a crop of apples, how do you harvest the apples? Do, the, do you pick them from the tree or do you chop down the tree? Well, even a politician understands if you chop down the tree, it might be easier to pick up the apples, but you won't have apples next year. Apples are the income. The tree is the capital. We don't want politicians to be double and triple and quadruple taxing, saving, and investing. That's the good news. Tax competition for, for uh, several decades was forcing tax rates down, was forcing politicians to do the right thing even though they don't want to. But here's the bad news. Politicians figured out, let's replace tax competition with tax cartelization. Working through the OECD, the European Commission, and for that matter, other bureaucracies, they have been trying to create captive customers, sort of like a gas station running other gas stations out of business and then ripping you off with high prices. And unfortunately, in the last 10 years, they've been winning. Human rights laws on financial privacy have been eviscerated, uh, extraterritorial tax laws have expanded, and you have this OECD multilateral convention on mutual administrative assistance and tax matters. And what does that do? It, in effect, requires automatic collection and sharing of information, even with some of the world's most dodgy and corrupt governments. Uh, and, and that, and, and, but from an economic perspective, why this matters? Because politicians now think, ha-ha, even if the geese with the golden eggs fly away, our tax code can follow them around the world. And that's why in the last 10 years, tax rates have been creeping upward again. So we're, we're in very, very bad situation. I'll close just by showing a couple of quotes. Lord Acton, the distribution of power among several states is the best check on democracy. Because what is democracy? Two wolves and a sheep voting what to have for lunch. You want the sheep to be able to escape, and that's what jurisdictional competition does. And then Max Weber, uh, I'll just read the last part of the quote. The separate states had to compete for mobile capital. Europe became rich in part because of jurisdictional competition. Now, I also have all sorts of quotes from Nobel Prize winners. I'm not going to read them out because I want to keep on time. We have a German moderator, and they're very strict. But, you know, uh, Vernon Smith, Edward Prescott, Bavarian. Ed Edmund Phelps. <laughs> well, Bavarians are more chill. They're more relaxed yeah. about things, right? Uh, Bavarians, Bavarians are like the Austrians. Yeah, like oh, the Austrians. Yeah. Like the we have Douglas North. We have Friedrich Hayek. And, and, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll close with this simple observation. I'm not in favor of tax evasion. I believe in the rule of law. But I want a tax system that allows growth. And if you want both tax compliance and economic prosperity, you want to have a low tax rate, no double taxation, and a territorial tax system. With that kind of regime, like a hall Rabushka flat tax, it doesn't matter whether your bank account's in Panama City, Florida, or Panama City, Panama, Geneva, Illinois, or Geneva, Switzerland. In other words, good tax policy is consistent with growth and with tax compliance. And even Adam Smith recognized this uh, many, many years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you.